Operating within Australia is one of the world's most extensive tramway systems, serving the nation's second largest city. Melbourne, capital of the state of Victoria, is situated near the mouth of the Yarra River on the northern end of Port Phillip Bay. The suburbs of Melbourne extend 20 kilometres to the north and west, and 40 kilometres to the east, and around the bay to the south. Not only is Melbourne regarded as the financial, fashion and cultural capital of Australia, it is also home to many of the country's most important sporting events. On the fringe of the central city area, the National Tennis Centre hosts world-class tournaments, as well as numerous entertainment events. The Melbourne Cricket Ground, Australia's largest stadium, was the main venue for the 1956 Olympic Games. The ground is host to cricket and Australian rules football, for which Melbourne is famous. A fashion parade, champagne and horse racing combine at Flemington to make the Melbourne Cup an international racing event. The race that stops the nation has been held annually since 1861. Domed at Flinders Street Station is the major city railway terminal. The current building has stood on this site from 1910 and seen the changing face of Melbourne since the age of horse-drawn vehicles, gas lighting and cable trams. As Melbourne developed and grew in size, so too did the need for an improved means of conveyance. Early forms of transport were generally limited to bicycles and horse-drawn vehicles. The 1850s saw the development of steam haul railways, though the requirement remained for some form of mass transport in the city streets. By the early 1880s, it was realised that the geography of Melbourne lent itself ideally to a cable tram system, similar to the network so successfully running in San Francisco. The first line between the city and nearby Richmond began operating in late 1885, with the system eventually growing to cover 17 routes over 73 kilometres, or 46 miles of double track. Trams were hauled along the road by cables housed in a slotway between the rails. Large steam-driven engines moved the cables beneath the streets at a steady 13 miles per hour. By the early 1900s, confidence in the first electric tramways was such that these were to be further developed. This decision, in turn, was to bring about the eventual demise of the cable system. The advantages of electric traction were soon realised by the Victorian Railways, with electrification of its suburban rail network completed in the 1920s. W-class trams soon became a common sight, and by late 1940, Melbourne's cable trams had been consigned to history. In addition to the well-known W-Class, the modern tramway fleet consists of 230 Z-Class with their distinguishable tapered end features. The squarer looking A-Class of which 70 were built and the most recently constructed trams, the large articulated B-Class or light rail vehicle of which there are 132. Melbourne's 235 kilometres of tramway system operates over 27 individual routes. Route number one commences at East Coburg, north of the city, and passes through the central business district to terminate at South Melbourne Beach. This program captures some of the many suburbs, the architecture, the tramways and the people that make up this fine city. Commencing at Bell Street, the 10-kilometre East Coburg route originates in an area established in the 1920s during a period of heightened growth of newer suburbs around Melbourne.
the familiar W class is being phased out as new trams are introduced. There were actually seven variations of this design. The first, correctly known as the W, ran on Melbourne streets in 1923. Advances in design and technology saw an improved version known as the W1 into service in 1925. Further development over the years saw the construction of W2s, 3s and so on, to the final W7 model. Weighing 18 tonnes with a seating capacity of 48, these final 40 vehicles emerged from the workshops in 1955. After leaving East Coburg and passing through Brunswick, the inner suburb of Carlton provides examples of architecture built at the height of the land boom times of the 1880s. Route number one passes over the now abandoned North Carlton railway line. Passenger services ceased in 1948. However, goods trains continued to run until final closure of the line in 1981. All state capital cities and a number of large provincial cities once had tramway systems. The majority were closed in the 1950s and 60s, at a time when buses seemed an answer for a need to extend and redevelop transport systems. Melbourne had a reasonably new tram system at this time, as the cable trams had ceased running only 20 years earlier. Due largely to this, closure of the electric tramways was not an issue. A popular joke with visitors to Melbourne is its weather. It is said Melbourne can have four seasons in one day. Summer temperatures can be very high, contrasted by winters that are cold, wet and windy. However, unlike many cities in the Northern Hemisphere and some in New Zealand, there are no snowfalls to impede life in the city. Tram Route 1 passes the Melbourne University at the northern end of Swanson Street, one of the main city thoroughfares. Of the nine different tram routes passing along Swanson Street, seven of them are from south of the city. They terminate here to return back to their originating suburb. Curving at Franklin Street, the trams commence their run through the central business district. The city area has wide streets laid out in 1837 by surveyor Robert Hoddle. These generously wide thoroughfares and the well-planned grid pattern of the city have been of great benefit to the orderly growth of the retail precinct and associated traffic flow. Of the 27 tram routes, 24 enter the central city area, converging to use one of the eight main thoroughfares. The focal point for people and shopping is the intersection of Swanson Street and the Burke Street Mall. More than 2,000 tram journeys are timetabled over this busy pedestrian and tram crossing daily. Declared a city in 1842, Melbourne became the national capital upon federation in 1901 and remained so until the development of Canberra 26 years later. Today, the population of multicultural Melbourne is just over 3 million people. 
Flinders Street station is the hub of the suburban rail network, with over 105,000 people passing through daily. Construction of the present station, occupying two corners of the intersection, commenced in 1905. This is the third building to occupy the site, the original erected in 1854 for Australia's first steam-hauled passenger railway. St Paul's Cathedral, opposite the station, stands on the site of Melbourne's first official church service held in 1836. On the other corner is the famous Young and Jackson's Princess Bridge Hotel, the location of the city's first land sale held in 1837. One of several tramway works vehicles, track cleaning tram number 10W, was purchased from the Sydney tram system in 1958. Melbourne was founded in 1835 when settled by colonists from Tasmania led by John Batman. John Pascoe Faulkner was appointed by the New South Wales government to legitimise the settlement in 1837 and the present plans of the city were drawn up. Generally regarded as Melbourne's most gracious thoroughfare, Collins Street is home to many of the city's exclusive boutiques. The elaborately decorated Block Arcade was built in 1892 and is a copy of the Milano Galleria Vittoria in Italy. Collins Street was originally the area for banking and financial institutions and is flanked by many prestigious buildings dating back to the Gothic era of the late 1880s. A recent initiative to enhance the city's tourism potential has been the introduction of City Circle tourist trams in their distinctive burgundy colour scheme. 10W class trams have been specially refurbished to provide a regular means of travel around the city perimeter, taking in some of Melbourne's best known landmarks and attractions. As part of the development of this service, some new sections of track were laid, enabling trams to complete the city circuit. Occupying half a city block, the Melbourne Central Shopping Complex stands above Museum Underground Station. The electric suburban rail service fans out as far as 40 kilometres from the city. Melbourne's electric train service commenced running in 1919, making it the first Australian city to introduce such services. The highlight of the complex is the shot tower, from which molten lead was once dropped into baths of water to make shotgun pellets. The pinnacle of shopping centres, Melbourne Central comprises 180 specialty shops, as well as the famous Daimaru department store. A lifestyle gaining popularity is one of inner city living, bringing people and their activities back to the central area. The Yarra River is regaining its position as the focal point of the revitalised city. The Victorian Art Centre complex is Melbourne's cultural home to world-class opera, fine arts, music and ballet. A vital adjunct to recent development of the south bank of the river, the Art Centre secures Melbourne's position as the theatre capital of Australia. After crossing the Yarra River, the main city thoroughfare of Swanson Street becomes St Kilda Road. And from outside the Arts Centre, Tram Route 1 turns towards South Melbourne. The 5km South Melbourne Beach Route is one of five to provide services to the bay and beach areas of St Kilda and South Melbourne. The number of W-class trams in service continues to decline with the introduction of the newer articulated B-class vehicles. However, for operation of the more popular tourist routes, a number of the historically significant Ws will be retained. 
The track from St Kilda Road to here at Clarendon Street was opened as an electric line in 1925. The remainder of the route to South Melbourne Beach had been opened in 1890 as a cable line running via Clarendon Street to the city rather than St Kilda Road. Bordering 1.2 hectares of substantial gardens and recreational grounds, St Vincent Place in the suburb of Albert Park was laid out in the 1850s. Many grand houses from the Victorian era, dating predominantly from the 1870s, were developed around St Vincent Place for the likes of businessmen and doctors. Less extravagant dwellings for the working class were constructed elsewhere within the suburb, mainly in the form of small cottages. The majority of buildings have been restored to their full magnificence after becoming run down during the 1930s and 40s. Melbourne's 600 operational trams run over track laid to a gauge of 1,435 millimetres or 4 feet 8 and a half inches. The system generally operates within a radius of 12 kilometres from the city area, though some routes extend to 18 kilometres. The South Melbourne Beach area provides both a relaxing and recreational atmosphere and with its close proximity to the city and other suburbs, is extremely popular during the summer months. The restored steam tug Wattle offers passengers a cruise with a difference around the bay. Spanning the lower reaches of the Yarra River, the Westgate Bridge provides easy access between the city and western suburbs. Tram Route 64 commences 13 kilometres to the southeast of the city, passing through suburbs noticeably different in style from those of the Victorian era. The terminus at East Brighton is now the most southerly tram terminus in the world. From here, trams commence their 50-minute run to the city, travelling firstly along Hawthorne Road. An ongoing plan is seeing track relayed in mass concrete. Trams remain running throughout the project, either on new track awaiting its concrete surround, or at times on temporary track laid to one side of the road surface. The traditional groove tramway rail is no longer manufactured in Australia. Instead, railway style rail is now used. Being specially manufactured for tramway use, it is lighter in weight than conventional railway rail. 
Caulfield, the next suburb serviced by Route 64, has remained essentially middle class since its initial development in the 1840s. As Melbourne grew, Caulfield progressed as a country retreat for the world to do. Opulent mansions reflected the upper class social and cultural life of the day. This attractive residential suburb was further developed during the 1920s. The original terminus of Route 64 was here at the intersection with North Road. The line was extended to the present terminus in 1937 as the suburbs continued to expand. Z-Class trams were introduced in 1975 and the initial batch of 115 was found to be rough riding. A subsequent order of an additional 115 entering service between 1979 and 1984 had improvements made to the suspension and interior layout. Pantographs are replacing trolley poles as a means of making contact with the overhead wiring. Their use will eliminate delays caused by dewirements, a common problem with the traditional pole. Balaclava Junction in Caulfield North is the most complex junction of tracks on the entire system. The points here are operated by the driver using a point bar to set the route. Generally, however, around the system, such points are remotely operated from the tram. A detector in the overhead wiring is activated by the driver as the pole passes underneath, thereby selecting the direction to be taken. Of the system's 27 main routes, number 69 is one of three that cross the suburbs without actually entering the city. Commencing in St Kilda, it momentarily joins Route 64 at Balaclava Junction, leaving it at Dandenong Road. From St Kilda, it passes through Balaclava, Caulfield North, Morven and Kuyong, terminating in Kew. Located adjacent to the busy shopping area of Glen Ferry Road is Morven Depot. Built in 1910 by the Paran and Morven Tramways Trust, it is one of eight depots now placed around the system. These depots house the tram fleet, provide facilities for routine maintenance and are the operating basis for tramway employees. Early electric tramways around Melbourne were, in the main, developed by tramway trusts. These tram networks ran from the cable tram termini to serve developing suburbs further out and were taken over by the Melbourne and Metropolitan Tramways Board in 1920. The intention was to place all tramway operations under one authority and at the same time convert the cable tram system to electric operation. Dandenong Road is a beautiful tree-lined boulevard and from the junction of Route 69 at Hawthorne Road, Route 64 continues its run to the city. 
The tramway runs along its own right of way or reserve track, providing a more relaxed and spirited run unhindered by road traffic. The open ballasted track affords a significantly smoother and quieter ride, while the Peran and Morven Tramways Trust centre span poles are fine examples of ornate ironwork from the Victorian era. Among the fleet, there are individual art trams which have been painted by local artists. In addition to these travelling canvases, colourful all-over advertising can be found on a number of trams promoting a varied range of products and services. Kilda Junction is a complex tram and roadway intersection which was subject to a major rebuilding project in the late 1960s. Located four and a half kilometres from the city, trams from Dandenong Road join those from Brighton Road and Fitzroy Street for the run along the magnificent thoroughfare of St Kilda Road, the southern gateway to the city. Melbourne Shrine of Remembrance, the memorial to those who served their country in wartime, is located along St Kilda Road. Set amongst 214 hectares of lawns, gardens and trees of the King's Domain, it is adjacent to the Royal Botanic Gardens. The well-known boulevard of St Kilda Road is a much prized business address. This gracious roadway was served by cable trams from 1888 until the arrival of electric services in 1926. Peak hour in Swanson Street has the tramway tracks operating to near maximum capacity. After travelling through the city, most trams, including Route 64, terminate at either Queensbury Street or outside the Melbourne University, at the northern end of Swanson Street. From here, they shunt and commence the southbound portion of their rostered working. Keeping a tramway system operating requires much activity not normally seen or even considered by the traveller. The continuous supply of power to the overhead wiring is provided by 41 substations throughout the network. These substations convert 11,000 volts AC to 600 volts DC required for the trams and are all remotely controlled from one central location in the inner suburb of Carlton. 
Within the Queensbury Street substation, these rotary converters were brought into service with the introduction of electric trams in the 1920s. Technology in the form of solid-state rectifiers has progressively replaced older equipment in the conversion of the electrical supply from AC to DC. Overhead maintenance crews keep wiring in a safe and operable condition. As well as routine maintenance, they respond to urgent situations involving disarranged or unserviceable wiring. This former cable tram engine house in Fitzroy is now the fleet control centre. And from here, tram and bus fleet operations are monitored and controlled. Communication between the control centre and vehicles is increasingly being made through roadside transponder units from which data and radio signals are exchanged. Yeah, back to you, Tim. Yeah, that Essendon 10 run will have to come back from Grant Street. There's no suitable market shorts there to block him. Flat operations. Tram 163. Defective number 5 door. Yeah, go ahead, please, drop. Built originally for passenger use in 1923, Tram 9W is another of the small number of older vehicles converted for track maintenance purposes. These scrubber cars are fitted with carborundum blocks for grinding deformations from the rail service, as well as clearing tracks of slippery autumn leaves. South Melbourne Depot is located on busy Kings Way, only two kilometres from the city. In addition to being an important crewing location, a considerable number of light repairs to the tram fleet are undertaken here, along with regular daily maintenance activities. Major repair work is carried out in the Preston workshops to the north of the city. Across the metropolitan area, there are four level crossings where tram lines and suburban railway tracks cross each other. Movements over these crossings are controlled by signal boxes from where signals and booms are operated. The interlocking frame within the signal box also controls switching of the overhead power supply at the crossing. 600 volts for trams or 1500 volts for electric trains.
The West Coburg route is a 12 and a half kilometre journey that commences just south of the city and passes through to the northern suburbs. Junctioning from St Kilda Road at the Domain Road terminus, it bypasses the more popular St Kilda Road Swanson Street section. Turning from Park Street, South Melbourne into Kingsway, Route 55 then passes along Queensbridge Street to enter the earliest established section of the city, where the first settlers arrived in the 1830s. This western end of the city consists mainly of office buildings, which at weekends see little activity. To cater for the altered passenger demand, the West Coburg service is instead operated along Elizabeth Street at these times and numbered 68. William Street is dominated by the legal profession and is home to the Supreme Court, County Court and Barristers Chambers and at one time the Royal Mint. After leaving the city, the route passes along a reserve track section in the suburb of North Melbourne. This northern area of the city has been a market site since the 1860s, and the tradition continues today with the popular Victoria Market. Flemington Road is a major transport artery from north of the city. The West Coburg route joins the Airport West Line, Route 59, for a section of this run. Forming the border of residential North Melbourne and Royal Park, this major roadway saw the opening of the electric tramway in 1925, replacing the Flemington Road cable tram service. At Abbotsford Street, Route 55 leaves the Airport West Line turning into Royal Park. Suburbia is momentarily dispensed with while passing through 128 hectares of sporting reserves in parkland on the approach to the Melbourne Zoo. The West Coburg route opened in four stages from 1925 to 1927. However, this was not Royal Park's first association with tramways. Melbourne's last horse-drawn tram service operated through a portion of this public land until 1923, serving the Royal Melbourne Zoological Garden. After pausing at the zoo, the service continues on through Royal Park and back into the suburbs for a further six kilometres to terminate at Bell Street, West Coburg. The Royal Melbourne Zoo was established in 1861 and covering 22 hectares has grown to become one of the finest in the world.
Route 96 commences in St Kilda and runs for 14 kilometres north through the city to East Brunswick. Served by four tram routes, St Kilda is a popular cosmopolitan beachside suburb. It is well known for, among other things, a variety of cafes, restaurants, nightlife and the Sunday craft market. The fun attraction Luna Park opened in 1912 and has remained a well-known St Kilda landmark. The upper esplanade is serviced by Route 96 and the St Kilda Road Tram Route 16, while Cross Suburban Route 69 terminates adjacent to these at Luna Park. Busy Ackland Street is the terminus for the two city routes. A multicultural street, it is particularly famous for its variety of international cake shops and eateries. St Kilda was proclaimed a municipal district in 1885 and by 1891 was afforded the luxury of a cable tram service connecting from St Kilda Road. By 1897 this had been upgraded to a through cable route from the city. In 1925 the section from St Kilda to Windsor became the first cable line to be electrified. Route 96 junctions from Route 16 and Fitzroy Street and turns onto reserve track at the historic former St Kilda railway station. Melbourne's first permanent electric tram service began operating in 1906 over an 8 kilometre route between here and Elwood. Operated by the Victorian Railways, it connected with steam hauled trains to Melbourne, but worn out and lacking maintenance, closed in 1959. The 7 km St Kilda Railway opened in 1857 and was converted to light rail operation in 1987. Track gauge was reduced from the broad 5 feet 3 inches to standard gauge 4 feet 8 and a half inches and station platforms lowered to tram stop height. Route 96 is generally served by the 23.6 metre long B-class articulated trams. Following the initial introduction of two prototype vehicles in 1984, an order was placed for a fleet of 130. With a top speed of 65 kilometres per hour and weighing 34 tonnes, these entered service between 1987 and 1994. The sporting and recreational area of Albert Park Lake is serviced by the St Kilda and South Melbourne Beach Route 10, as well as Route 96. Route 10 runs through South Melbourne along Clarendon Street, crosses Route 1, then passes beneath Route 96 at Albert Park. The service then continues south through Middle Park, parallel to the nearby beach, and terminates adjacent to Fitzroy Street in St Kilda. Due to their historical significance, all four stations on the former railway remain. The St Kilda Railway was the second suburban line built in Melbourne and operated initially by the Melbourne and Hobson's Bay Railway Company from 1857. Public ownership eventuated in 1878, followed by electrification 41 years later in 1919.
passing beneath some of the earliest bridges of their type in Victoria, it is a short distance to the former station at South Melbourne. The town of South Melbourne, three kilometres from the city, was established in 1853 and originally known as Emerald Hill. Its first link with public transport was the opening of the station on the St Kilda Line in 1858. Air-conditioned and with a seating capacity of 76, these larger and more comfortable vehicles are utilised on the more highly patronised services. Port Junction is where Route 96 joins the Port Melbourne Line, itself a former railway. It was converted to light rail operation along with the St Kilda Line in 1987. In 1854, Australia's first steam hauled passenger train ran from Flinders Street Station over a portion of this route to Port Melbourne. At Clarendon Street, trams leave the reserve track section to join those on Route 10. Trams are generally afforded priority over road vehicles at traffic lights, roundabouts and on major roads. The fairway system allows for dedicated sections of busier roadways to be used exclusively for tram services. Once over the Yarra River, Clarendon Street becomes Spencer Street and for a short distance from the intersection with Flinders Street, the tracks are shared by six different tram routes. A-class trams introduced in 1984 operate along this section on the North Borwin and Port Melbourne to Mont Albert routes. Outside Spencer Street Railway Station, the light rail route turns to join the Bandura service, Route 86, passing east along Burke Street through the heart of the city. Melbourne's last cable tram service operated along Burke Street, closing in 1940. Buses replaced trams for 15 years until the introduction of electric trams along this route in 1955. The falling grade to the intersection with Elizabeth Street sees plenty of sand drop from trams onto the roadway to assist with braking. Flanked by major department stores, the Burke Street Mall requires a speed limit of 10 kilometres per hour. Burke Street is part of Melbourne's theatre and entertainment district. Live theatre, cinemas, nightclubs and restaurants attract crowds to the eastern end of the city. From Burke Street, Route 96 turns momentarily into Spring Street, passes the Princess Theatre, then enters Nicholson Street and continues on to East Brunswick. The Princess Theatre was built in 1880 and has been fully restored. Home to a continuous booking of stage shows, seats were kept full during a three-year run of Phantom of the Opera.
popular and unique best describes Melbourne's famous tramcar restaurants. Diners are afforded the finest of culinary delights, service to match, and the splendour of constantly changing views of the city and southeastern suburbs. This novel and exclusive service is a fine way to complete a journey of Melbourne by tram.